Hello and welcome to Jennifer Natters, my knitting and nattering podcast. I am your host Jennifer and this is where I talk about what I've been knitting. Sorry, I can see there's reflection on my glasses. What I've been knitting and what's going on in my life. I apologize for two things. Uh, I'm doing this at night because my baby is now two and she's giving up napping which is 99% a good thing in my life. And the 1% bad is that it means I can no longer do this in the middle of the day while she's asleep. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out an alternate lighting strategy because this really isn't working. The low light, the camera doesn't work well, there's weird glare, shadows on my face, all the colors look wrong gonna have to do something else about that. Um, The other thing I'm gonna apologize for is the sound of the rain on the roof. I really like the sound of the rain but I understand I mean it might be really loud. Hopefully it's not too loud. I've listened to other videos I've done when it's raining and it hasn't been too bad. I did wait a few nights because it was really raining really heavily. Um, Tonight it's just kind of a mild mid-level of rain. Sorry, just had a little bit of a frog in my throat there. Um, So yeah, hopefully the lighting's not too bad and the sound of the rain isn't too bad. I will try to figure out different lighting or I'm gonna have to start recording in another room until the sun comes out at night, which will happen. The sun will come out at night. I do live in northern Scotland um, so, yeah, hello, I'm a bit, it's been almost two full weeks since I've recorded a podcast, we had a bit of a lurgy that went around, I had a tummy bug, and then two days later, Catherine got it, and then two days after that, Christina got it, so it wasn't, I was not able to record a video last week. And the week before, if you watched it, I said I was hoping to actually get something finished last week to show you this time, and I have something finished to show you. Um, I actually finished all three of the things I said I would like to finish, although I only have two to show you. So the first one is a proper finished object, and well, I haven't added buttons yet, but it has been washed and blocked, and I've even woven in and trimmed the ends. And this is the Alouette cardigan, and that is by Lisa, just have to check, Chemery. She's Frogonette on social media. And look at just how cute this is. I kind of changed the proportions a little bit. Um, the pattern had, I did more repeats of this kind of embroidery stretch stitch this dip stitch sorry the light's changing of this dip stitch here to make the torso longer because that is where Catherine has all of her length so I made the dip stitch longer and then proportionally the skirt's not as long though I think it is actually the same length that the pattern calls for and this is knit in Ripples Crafts Merino Sport Weight that's a super wash, and this is the colorway Syringa, which I believe is a South African flower. Um, and it is just lovely, this slightly um, tonal purple. And I knit the body, separated for the sleeves, knit down and started the skirt with the first skein. And then with the second stick gain, I started with the sleeves uh, right around here and knit both sleeves and then went back and finished knitting the skirt. I kind of just knit till I got bored. Um, I still have 20 grams left, just about. I started with two skeins, so 200 grams. I've got about 20 grams left. I could have done more. I'm a little worried about the weight that the jumper will stretch a bit 
Um, the other thing I changed is the sleeves. The pattern makes them kind of elbow length, three quarter length. So I made, I continued doing the taper as written in the pattern to make the sleeves longer. And so I had the stitch count for a smaller size and then just followed the instructions to do this little kind of a pleat effect here to give the sleeves a little bit of a flare. And my hope is that as Catherine continues to wear it, it might shrink up to be a three quarter length or elbow length, but she'll have enough. But that should last her a while. I did knit the two year old size because um, the two-year-old size was about an inch wider in circumference than her chest circumference. And then the pattern has almost an inch of ease written into it. So it should fit around her for a while. I finished it today and I let her try it on. And she tried it on and then almost immediately gave it back to me. Because I think she's used to all the other times I said, here, try it on. And I'll give it back. Um, and she'll be like, no, I want to clip the needles. She's been really cute with this. But she gave it back. And then I went and put it in. I've got a tub in the sink I use in one of in the utility room sink that I use for washing knits. And I put it in there and she started crying and wanting it back and she was very sad and I'm like, no, no, we have to wash it. And then after it had soaked for a while, I put it in the washing machine and put it on a spin cycle just to get the extra out. It is a super wash wool, so it should be washable, but I don't tend to wash things that way. Um, with I've knit most of Christina's jumpers, kittens jumpers, out of this wool in different colors and then I tend to put non-washable buttons on them. Uh, so I just put it, I, pretty much everything I hand wash, I put in the washing machine just on a spin cycle to get the extra water out. And she didn't like it when I did that. And then I brought it in here actually. Um, the heat was on so this room was nice and toasty warm. And I laid out flat so that nothing was kind of flipped over or anything, laid out flat to dry. And she didn't like that either. But tomorrow when she wakes up, I will be able to say it's done. And if you want buttons, it will be done later today. Uh, I think I have buttons that will work nicely with this. I think I have some light purple little ceramic flower buttons that I bought. It should be about the right size for the buttonholes. And if not, I do have a large button stash and I can put just a few. I did wind up working the buttonholes. Um, the picture for the pattern doesn't have buttonholes go all the way down. And the pattern says if you want, you can just stop doing buttonholes where you want or continue. So I did buttonholes all the way down, but I don't know if I will sew buttons on. Um, buttonholes you can use or not use, but they have to be there if you want to use them. So I erred on the side of doing lots of buttonholes. They're not really noticeable in the button band on its own. But yeah, this is deliciously soft and squishy. It is such a beautiful tonal variegated colorway. Um, it's a bit lighter than anything I would pick for myself, but I think it'll be wonderful on Catherine. She looks really good in those kind of springy, delicate colors. And it's really soft. I've knit ones for Kitten, my older child, so I know the yarn holds up really well. The colors last really well. And yeah, very happy to have that done. Uh, it will also count along with the cowl I knit in a different colorway of the same yarn. They both count for the field work make along that Knit British, um, Louise of Knit British is hosting. And those are projects made out of 100% wool being sold by vendors who will be at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival this weekend. 
I am not going, but I can still participate in the thing. So I knit a cowl and a child's jumper. Yeah, that's kind of a coincidence that they were both knit in the time period if they count, but they do, so I entered them. The next one I have to show you is not really a finished object, but I did finish the first of my Bob Socks. And this is a pattern by Rachel Coopy, and it's just a vanilla uh, top-down DK sock yarn pattern. Uh, she did hers in two colors, but I just used one. And I added an extra repeat of this and turns into a broken rib, but it's just alternating two by two rib. And then I did directional decreases. I don't know if you can see this. I've got stitch markers just to show um, this is where I started decreases and then I introduced decreases on the other side and then I went to decreases every row at that point and that gives a directional toe because my toes, my foot doesn't look like that. It looks, it's, you know, um, I definitely have a left foot and a right foot. So I've made a left foot sock. And then when I do the other one, I'm just going to have to make sure I do a right foot sock. Um, but yeah, this is, again, it's Ripple's Craft Yarn. This is her doubly reliable sock yarn, which is a DK weight sock yarn. Um, so there'll be nice, thick, warm socks for colder days. And this is one of her storm colorways. Uh, the storm ones are non-repeatable colorways. Just, it's a dying, it's a way she has of dying colors that makes non-repeatable. Even if she uses the same colors in the same order, you're not going to get something that's going to look the same. So I finished that one and I have started the second sock. Ta-da! Second sock. And yeah, these are well underway. I just started for the third section of ribbing. And the rain has died down a little bit, but now I can hear the gutters dripping. We've had a lot of rain these last couple of days. It's Storm Gareth coming through. And my third project, I no longer have to show you because I frogged it, but I will put in, I'll pause the video here so I can put in a picture I took before I frogged it. So hopefully I was able to do that and you were able to see it. And not unfortunately, wasn't working for me. That was the first project for the Boost Your Knitting Another Year of Techniques book um, that'll be coming out in August, I believe, August or September. And that's from the Arnold Culliford's Jen and Jim. And the first project is for the Tuck Stitch, which is a brioche variant where it's not quite a full brioche stitch and it wound up making a kind of textured pattern. It was actually a lot of fun to knit. Um, my problem was that I had tried yarn bossing my skein when I was separating it into two sections, had a lot of gray. And I think when I was knitting it up, a lot of the gray, it was a tonal gray. Um, so the colorway is called Fan Block and it's a Chopal wool it's the gradient, so it's a DK one, um, a single ply that's slightly lightly felted so it doesn't twist the way a single ply often can. And they do long gradient repeats, which the gradient is longer than the amount of wool you get in a ball. So any ball you get, what section of the gradient is, um, it varies. And the one I got had a big splodge of the pink. It was a uh, fan block is the colorway. And there was a big splodge of the pink. It was a little bit of gray, big pink. Gray, 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 g
a big splodge of teal, and then gray again. And I think just looking at the gray, it all looked gray to me, but if I had just left it alone, the grays read as at one end it's very pink, and then there's this kind of a section of true gray, and then the other end the gray reads as very teal. So if I'd kind of just left it alone, it would have been fine. It would have looked really nice. But I tried pulling out a bunch of the gray, and then my gradient didn't gradient anymore. There was a big line. And because of the way the wool is made, it tends to snag on itself really easily. So I'd made, um, instead of making my normal center pull balls, I just made like the traditional yarn ball that you picture a cat batting around the house. And that meant when I wound it up, some of the colors were inside the ball and outside of the other ball. So I couldn't, I pulled it all out and I was going to restart and I realized I'd kind of made a pig's ear of the whole thing. Um, and when I tried casting it on, I kept running into problems. I kept having to re-knit and re-knit and re-knit and I wasn't making any progress. And kind of around the time I got past that, I realized I did not want to re-knit it. Um, so instead I turned the yarn into some pom-poms. I've done two so far and I have enough to do at least one more big one. Um, and they actually make really neat pom-poms. They feel a lot like the plastic ones that were really popular when I was when I was young. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing with the wool. And then I don't feel, well, I don't have the wool sitting in the stash looking at me like, you didn't use me, what are you gonna do with me? And yeah, I learned the technique. I learned how to do the stitch. It was fun. I did not particularly enjoy the texture of the pattern. Um, as far as textures go, I like garter stitch and I like cables. I don't like baubles. Um, I don't like a lot of basket weave and other stuff. That's just me. Uh, so yeah, that was my third project, which is now a Frog Pond one. And that's kind of really all I've worked on these two weeks. Um, with myself, I mean, I was sick. So I didn't knit for a while and then each of my babies were sick. That really cut into my knitting time. Uh, so that's all I worked on in the last two weeks. But I did, I mean like the three things I did work on, I did really well at. Um, the, the tuck stitch one, the Bremen cowl, I don't believe I said, the Bremen cowl Nancy Mar Marchant uh, would have been finished if I hadn't screwed up the yarn bossing and so that's what I have going for acquisitions I have not I think bought anything these last two weeks um, or at least not anything I would mention on the podcast and um, but there is a pattern coming out which is an Emily K Williams one again my friend Emily who lives here in Inverness. Uh, she has a new pattern coming out, which is in Ripples Crafts Cochrane yarn. So you can see this is a combination of things that I love. And that is coming out, I believe this week. She just launched another pattern for a pullover today. That is an interesting design, like a how to build it, interesting from a construction point of view, but not something I could see myself wearing. Um, if she ever wants to figure out a child size, I might knit one for one of my children just to see the technique of how it is constructed. Um, so she did launch a pullover today, but not yet the shawl that she's been teasing on social media. And Cochrane is, I'm probably saying it wrong, it might be Cochin. No, I can't think of of what it is. Anyway, it's this yarn and it is a Scottish Beaumont blend that Helen had made 
specifically for her for Ripple's Crafts Yarn. Um, and this is, it's either Bramble or Bramble Picking. And then the silver is Moon Moonlit Night. Um, but anyway, she, and this is three skeins of the yarn. And the one Emily's releasing is three skeins, but it's one skein of each color for a three color shawl. And it looks really pretty. Um, but she hasn't released the pattern yet, so I don't have one to show you. And I've been meaning to frog this basically since I knit it. It wound up being much longer than would be practical. And the one Emily knit is a large, it's a similar shape. I mean, it's a crescent one like this with a blunt edge even. And, but it's not quite as long as this one is. It's a little deeper. So I might wear it more, but I don't particularly wear shawls, which is kind of the problem I ran into with this one. Um, I like knitting shawls. I like the way they look. I don't tend to wear them. Uh... And anyway, so I've been staring at the yarn, which Helen is taking to EYF. And she says she doesn't have that much from this year's clip left. I'd really like a jumper in this yarn. It is such a wonderful, scrumptious yarn. But I don't entirely know how much I need. I have enough left of the yarns from this that I could do a decent swatch and play around to find out what kind of yarn, how many skeins I would need to buy and what kind of jumper I could knit. Um, and part of me just wants to knit more, buy more of this purple or the silver and do a two color one or is looking at some of the purples and teals and then I realized it would basically look the same as my brushwork cardigan that I knit, knit which is the silver and the pink and the blue and the purple stripes. Um, so anyway, I've got that tab open and I'm trying to resist the temptation. I love this yarn so much. I really do want a sweater quantity in this yarn, but I have many sweater quantities in what is no doubt equally nice yarn, including two more sweater quantities of the brushwork, which I also really, really, really love. And so I need to perhaps knit that up before I buy the yarn, buy more of this yarn, which is a shame because I really want this yarn. And there's no guarantee Helen will be able to get more of it next year. I am starting to lose the plot. I am so tired. I don't know why I'm so tired. It's not even that late. Um, but yeah, so I haven't bought it, but I'm wanting to buy it and I'm trying to resist. And I'm also telling myself that I will see Helen possibly three more times. Well, I'm not going to see her this weekend, but I will see her three times. Possibly there are three or four upcoming opportunities for me to see Helen in person and buy yarn from her. And I always buy yarn from her. Her colors are very much ones that I adore. Um, uh, so I'm trying to tell myself that I can afford to wait until one of those occasions to buy yarn in person, and maybe I'll have knit some other things by then. Uh, okay, let's do family really quickly. The big news in family is that my friend Miss Chrissy, who is doing her world tour right now, a very slow world tour, has booked a month at a B&B nearby an Airbnb to come visit. So she has dates and everything. She's flying in, she's staying, and she will be here over my birthday. And when I was talking to my mother the other day, she said that she was looking at flights that would have her here for my birthday. So for a person who normally does not do anything at all for her birthday, um, I might actually have people here. I might need to have a party if there's people here. Um, especially since my niece's birthday, Miss Chrissy's oldest child's birthday, 
and Miss Chrissy's husband's birthday are both within a week of mine. Um, so yeah, we might need to actually do something this year. Uh, so that's the big news. Uh, Christina Kittens, I don't know why I'm calling her. Kittens School had an open day this morning and her class had the parents help build castles out of cardboard boxes and plastic tubs and other recyclable materials that they'd asked us to donate. And Kitten did a really good job. I was very impressed with what she came up with. One of the other children looked over and was like, wow, you're doing a good job. And Chris Kitten said, I know, I'm an artist. And I just started laughing because of the, the very frank and self-assured way that she said, I'm an artist. Uh, and someone else said they wanted to be an artist. And I said, well, all you need to do to be an artist is create art. Just do it and that will be who you are. But we do tell Kitten a lot that she's really very talented. And she is. She does wonderful drawings and paintings. And she's been building lots of stuff out of cardboard boxes. So she kind of had a leg up on these other kids. Um, who possibly do not spend quite as much time building little toy houses for their toys out of cardboard boxes. Um, so she designed and built her cardboard box and I basically fetched things for her and cut things for her. And yeah, I was really very impressed with what a good job she did. And on open days, they often have a table selling secondhand uniform kits. So I was able, I snuck out in the middle towards the end. I snuck out and went to check out the table. Um, and I was able to get her two more pinafore dresses, uh, what we would call a jumper in the US. Um, and I actually got her a school tie. The lady running it said she does not usually, it's the first school tie she's ever had. So I bought the school tie for a kitten and I told the lady I'm going to make her wear it twice a year, which will be individual school pictures and then class school pictures when you have to wear your most presentable uniform. But yeah, she now has a tie. That was one thing that was very difficult for me to get, is the only reason why I hadn't had one yet. They're not required to wear them. I think the P7s are, and she's a P1. Um, but the P1s are not required to wear a tie. And in order to get them, you had to go to a specific uniform shop, which was easiest to get to if you drove to. It wasn't the uniform shop that's in town doesn't carry our school's color. Um, most schools that I'm aware of have either red, green, or blue uniforms. Those are by far the most common colors. And kitten school is purple. So you can get purple stuff, but not as much, not as often. Um, you have to look harder for it. But anyway, the, the little uniform shop in town did not carry purple ties. So we had to go to the one that was slightly out of town, and it wasn't a thing I had managed. Uh, so yeah, now we have a tie. Yay! I'm very happy about that. And I'm always happy to have more uh, dresses, because Kitten's getting taller. She's growing. And yeah. I'm just looking at my notes right now. Miss Chrissy booked her visit. My mother is looking at dates. We had lots of lurgy. That's pretty much everything I have to say. Um, Catherine no longer says meow meow for cats. I mean, she still meows at them, but she doesn't call them meow meows anymore. She now calls them kikis. Kiki. Um, which is the Filipino, the word a Filipino world. I believe the Philippines speak many languages. Anyway, the, my friend from my, my university friend who was a Filipino exchange student 
said that that is, Kiki is the word for female genitals in her language. So she was always very amused when we would say Kiki, which was the name of a character in a webcomic her roommate and I liked in common. Uh, so yes, Christine Catherine now calls cats Kiki, um, which is almost exactly the same sound she makes when she tries to say candy. So it's context there. Um, I've been working on her, we're saying up. Because when we're out walking, if it's windy or cold and she decides it's too cold and she needs me to carry her so she can bury her face in my shoulder, she basically just tries to dive in front of me, which while we're walking, all of a sudden she's running in front of me. And today I even stepped on her. Um, so if she says up, I will know that what she wants is for me to pick her up and carry her so I don't step on her. And she's she's got up today as well. So her language you see the light flashing too right it's not just me being really tired if it's just me being really tired I don't actually want to know so um, yeah I think I'm gonna call this a night I'm clearly very tired and I'm rambling and yeah hopefully next week I will have found another lamp to put out here um, or acquired another lighting or have picked a different room to do this in. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for joining me and I will talk to you next week. Thank you. Bye.